Wednesday is the official board meeting at Hope, also here in the Sunday School Room. Thursday will be youth group here, also in the Sunday School Room at 6.30. Next Sunday, there will be choir practice. Now, this Sunday as well, following the service, that's 11.45, the bell ringers will practice. Everyone is welcome. They're performing at the Advent Music Night at Opera Mangling in Church, St. John's in the Woods, on December 1st. Although, Laura, it's this year, it's going to be at the fall. And then on December 8th, here for our old fashioned Christmas concert. Um, choir practice is next week, as will the bell ringers. Now, what else do we have? Oh, tomorrow. Does anyone know what time we're supposed to be up at the Cenotaph tomorrow? That's right, Jim. You got it. You are an experienced Cenotapher. Uh, before 11. The service will actually start just a little bit before. So we can try and have our moment of silence at, at 11. And it will be being led by the new Presbyterian Church Minister, Dick Eric. So... Uh, come and uh, that would be good. And then, thanks to all those who helped at our turkey supper last Wednesday. I'm sure I wasn't the only one that was tired at the end, but there was lots of good feedback. <laughs> oh, come on. It was a little good. Not a lot good. It was just a little good. Thank you, Anne, for your magic. <laughs> yes, and thank you to the everyone who did everything else. Uh, we had, while I was there, we almost videotaped the annual Jim trying to put pot pots back in the corner cupboard in the kitchen. That was the best. <laughs> I didn't yell at them this year. I did last year, but this year I did not yell at the pot. But we did get them in. And uh, the doors stayed shut when we closed them. So that was good. And we were out of here a little after 8.30. Yeah, crazy. Thank you to all those who helped. Okay, fall and Christmas activities are coming. Next Sunday, believe it or not, the Samaritan's Purse shoe boxes are due. The Sunday of the 24th will be White Gift Service Sunday so that we can get our Christmas gifts into Christmas for everyone. They are especially looking for gifts for people under the age 16 and under, but the hardest group to find is the 12 to 16 year olds. So gift cards are an option if you are wanting. Uh, and we are having our church decorating party on the 29th. Now, I know the youth group is meeting on the 28th and is going to try and do some outside stuff. But the 29th will be inside here. And Kyle, the stable will also get up on Thursday. Is that what I hear? Yeah, we'll get up on Thursday. Okay, so <laughs> that way uh, people over a certain age don't have to carry big barn beans. So that would be good. Um, Again, first Sunday of Advent is the Opera and Christmas Concert at St. John's in the Woods. December 8th, the Old Fashioned Christmas Concert. And 24th will be the Christmas Eve service here. Now, other community events, the, what are we calling what used to be the Santa Claus Parade in Alabama? Okay, the Alvinston Christmas celebration is happening on the Saturday, so let me, uh, the 14th, correct? And so, do you know what time it starts? I mean, some of it starts at 4 o'clock, but... We don't know how to have drive through the events either. Yeah, there's no drive through. So you go park and you come and wander around. There's going to be the live nativity scene again. So I am looking for people to be shepherds and wise men again. And there is also going to be some Christmas caroling at the gazebo. And I think we will we'll have some brass and we will have a piano player. So we're going to try. I've asked for more light from Chad this year. So we can actually see the books. 
Because we handed out books and told people to read it in the dark. Does that work very well, folks? Okay. There's also other community events on the bulletin board. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? If not, let us prepare our hearts for worship, our call to worship, which will be con continuing until the beginning of Advent, is on the screen. Thank you for 
for your grace and forgiveness. And may the same power that raised you from the dead grow in us, holy and harmonious living, so that we can live lives of peace and harmony with you and your creation. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn of praise is entitled, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
Because animals need to be tending. Any of you have a garden in your lifetime? Put up your hand. What happens if you don't tend your garden? The weeds take over. Yeah. And that's whether it's a flower garden or a vegetable garden. And so we are called to tend things and take care of what the, this everything and everyone in this creation. The Hebrew word for rule, and I just put that up on the screen as I could, that is pronounced ma mashal. Uh, this thing doesn't work. So you read it right to left. And it means to rule over in the way that a parent is to rule over or care for children under their responsibility, right? You don't rule over them and just control them their entire lives. Uh, if I was hoping Jenny was going to be here so I could say, Kyle, does your mother still try to tell you what to do all the time? And I know that in some ways the answer to that is yes, because my mother still tries to tell me. But the goal is always that our children will be able to go and live on their own. Yeah, she's just lucky she had a sore throat or sick today. Anyway. The, the other thing is, we also need to tend the rest of creation. And so we've been given a mission to love and care for everyone and everything around us to help them thrive. And what might that look like? Well, look, anybody ever seen a barn raising? It's pretty impressive, isn't it? All these individual people submitting to one task to work and do it together. It might be a little bit like doing a turkey supper, right? Yeah. We, each of us did as we were told. Some of us understood in deeper levels what we were doing and why. But it all worked out. And yes, I was home just after 8.30 at night. Ever cool, isn't it? But you know, sometimes when other people's lives are endangered, we sometimes you need to even use maybe armed forces. And so we do have people, there are times when we use force for, to protect our neighbors from threats. Just like we have police forces here, we have international armed forces to protect. And it's not to be done out of hate, it's to be done out of love for those who we are protecting as believers. It's part of our caring for people. And we need to honor and remember those that are willing to take that risk. Yeah. And so part of it is I want us to pray for those who are currently serving in the military. And who do we know around here that serves in the military? Mr. Andrew Higgins. We should say Captain Andrew Higgins. I asked him when he's getting a promotion. He goes, I got to do a lot more. I said, it's easy to get to be Captain. I think, let's go next. Captain, is it Major? I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but we can be praying for him and so many others. Okay? So let's pray for ourselves and for those in our, who serve us in their armed forces. Yeah, do you want me to just mention that? So the other thing, I'm actually going to mention it in the prayers later, but there was a guy that Laura and I went to Bible college with, and I played volleyball with him. His son, uh, just in October, a few weeks ago, um, was actually killed while serving in Latvia. So let's go to God in prayer. That's why you're going to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you that we can live as your disciples. Help us to willingly be your followers and live as caregivers for all of creation and all our neighbors. We especially pray today for the family of Andrew.
Andrew Davis. And for Andrew. As he serves. I also think of this other young man. Aaron. Who died recently. Seeking to serve. You and his neighbors. Be with his family. Amen. And let's pray for the, pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so, even in challenging times, we can have peace, because we believe there is a God who has a plan and is guiding us. So, Laura, I guess you want to we'll stand and sing as well.
Oh, you got it ready, Kyle? Oh, I know you can read. You can read really well. We're about to find out how good you are. I forgot to check this one. Okay, we'll read Romans 8, 26 to 30. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who teaches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that, <clears throat> that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. <coughs> Next, we'll our response will be Psalm 8, 1-9. Did I make the right choice? 
Everyone second guesses themselves. It's like me and Baskin Robbins. <laughs> there are too many choices. And when I finally get around to making a choice, I'm going, but I left off mine. I'm missing out. You know the fear of missing out? Oh my goodness. It's much easier just to go to Three Maples and get whatever they got. <laughs> And there was an article in 19, or sorry, in 2020 by Jacob Thompson entitled The Paradox of Choice, which says you are paralyzing your customers by doing this. And according to a meta-analysis, now a meta-analysis is not a study in and of itself, it takes a whole bunch of other studies people have done, put them all together, and guess what they found out? Oh, I'm going back. There we go. Being able to isolate and reduce choices for your customers will most likely boost sales. Why? Because even if you secure a sale, your customer will always be questioning whether they made the right choice after you bought it. Anybody ever felt that after you bought a car or anything? Of course, we all know what that feels like. Well, guess what? There was this online, this article goes on to describe an online company. It had 13 different variations of whatever it was they're selling. They didn't tell us what they were selling. But they had 13 variations. And their sales were kind of getting stuck. So they heard about this study and they did a test. They found out which of the 13 uh, variations sold best. And they got it down to five. 70% of their sales were those five, just simply five, uh, five of the variations. So they cut out the other eight and said, we're only going to sell the five. And guess what happened to their sales? Went up 20%. There is a stress that comes with too many variations. So how, how do I deal with either Baskin Robbins or those other ice cream stores that went across from the Dow People Place? It's really good. It has too many choices as well. How do I deal with it? I have a plan. I have personally self-limited. So when I am going to those stores, I look for four flavors. First, New York cherry cheesecake. Oh yeah. And what goes really well with that? Black cherry. Because you can't find those ones everywhere. And then, if I don't feel like that, I find orange pineapple and something with banana. Because those are also hard. And therefore, I just go in and have a lot less stress <laughs> by limiting the choice. So in our world today, you've heard me say, you know, we know from studies that some of our best and brightest young people and young adults are feeling under anxiety and stress all the time. And we have lots of people's theories on what that is. I think that this is one of the core problems, is that when we grow up today, there's too many choices. I remember talking to my mother. She goes, when I was young and coming out of high school, there were basically two or three choices. I was either a secretary, a nurse, or a school teacher. So my mother was the sec legal secretary, my aunt was the nurse. And my other aunt, who married my uncle, she was the school teacher. Today, with all the choices that are out there for people, it creates a whole bunch of stress. So how do we deal with this? I would argue we listen to Jesus. Ignore what I just I was in the state from last time. Here we go. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. By being a disciple, our choices are reduced to a manageable number, which will bring us some personal peace and can create corporate peace with others as we all follow Jesus together. Psalm 8, 3, as I said at the story time, when I consider the works, you've made us human beings a little lower than the angels, and you've made us rulers or caretakers over what? All the rest of creation. So, we need to stop acting like God 
with infinite choices and learn to live as a disciple or like a disciple with limited choices and we will find we are living more peaceful lives in our hearts and more in harmony with God and His creation. And we all need God's help. Anybody here have a favorite Bible story? Just give me any Bible story. Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah. Boy, did Samson need God's help. He was distracted by a girl. I've never heard guys being distracted by women. <laughs> I don't know where, how that could ever happen. But Samson was getting distracted, and she was getting him to do things that were not according to God's will. And Samson needed to listen to God, and he needed God's help. And even when he gets himself captured by the Philistines, it was God's help that God that helped him knock down their temple. And so everybody in the Bible, every hero, needs God's help. What other story? Anybody? Pick any story. No. No one. Oh yeah. No one not even needed to know. Hey God. Hey, there's a flood coming. Now, if you read closely the first six chapters of Genesis, it had not actually yet rained. The dew would come up, a mist and water, and that's how it watered the earth. There was no rain. So to suggest there was going to be a flood with, with thunderstorms and rain, something nobody had ever experienced, he had to be told by God, he had to believe him, and then he had to follow the Lord's instructions to use the right size of cubits to build his ship. And it worked. And that goes for Abraham and Sarah, it goes for King David, it goes for every single person in the Bible. We all need God's help. And so living like disciples means I don't have to save the world or fix the world. That's Jesus' job. Our job is to follow and to model that living God's ways are better. In other words, the Great Commission, be witnesses to me here in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the rest of the world. Now, it is suggested that much of our anxiety crisis today is a meaning crisis. Why am I here? And so why are we here? Just a minute. We are to be caretakers of creation. Again, the Hebrew word so the Hebrew word Moshel means to be stewards, people who, who care for and not just boss around. And we do this so that the people and the animals and the crops and our gardens will all be as fruitful as possible. That's why when Jesus was asked what is the greatest commandment, his answer was love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the first of the greatest commandment. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. By giving us the role of caretakers for the whole world and everyone and everything in it, under God's teachings, he gives us limited choices because we don't have to fix everything. We just care for it as best we can and leave the rest in his hands. Now, again, we get God's help. Romans 8 talks about how it is the Lord who helps give us the words to pray when we don't know how to pray. And then there's this promise of 828. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who be called according to his purpose. As people of faith, this promise is that God is working for our free benefit regardless of our circumstances. And so, regardless of our circumstances, we can have peace because God has a plan and is going to help work it out somehow. It also means that it's not our goal to coerce other people or try playing God and tell other people what to do all the time. That's Jesus' job. 
Our job is to set an example. Our job is to care for creation. Our job is to live and show the world that it is more fruitful to live God's way. The problem is when fear enters into our lives. The story of Cain and Abel. Abel was, je I mean, Cain was jealous of Abel that his sacrifice was more pleasing to God. Now, if you read the story, God tells Cain, be careful, sin is crutching out the door to control you. And if you just adjust how you're doing things, your sacrifice will be acceptable too. Well, you just have to change. And did Cain decide to change? No. He got jealous, killed his brother, and made a mess of everything. Fear and jealousy lead to violence even today. Think about the Holy Land in the Middle East. There are two groups of people that want the same land. And if the Palestinians, as they claim, might be descendants of Ishmael, I have no idea if that's true with the NA test or not. I don't know how you'd ever prove or disprove it. But even if they are still descendants of Abraham, that land is given to both of them. They need to learn to share. Now, it's easy for us over here to say, you guys need to get your act together and start sharing, because they're pretty hostile. But it's this fear and jealousy that creates war. Hearts and minds need to change. And... We can't change other people's hearts and minds. And what leads us to live in fruitful, productive, peaceful lives is trusting God to do what He's instructed us to do and let the Lord take care of the rest. So let's keep on gathering for worship to nurture that faith. The faith that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. In this way, we view our neighbors, especially our neighbors who may think differently than us. They're not the enemy. They are fellow human beings made in the image of God, just like us. And while we may disagree with them, we are not to hate them. We are to love them. Because we are to love those who would call themselves our enemy. That's the way and how radical Jesus is. And we can't do this on our own. We need God's help to do this. And so, but in conclusion, the paradox of choice is the choice creates stress because we're trying to be like God, something we weren't designed to do. We are called to be disciples. And if as disciples we trust and follow the Lord, that will limit our choices to more manageable levels of how to steward and care for the world and everything and everyone in it. And then, if we stop living in fear because we trust the Lord, we'll be more willing and able to work together. That fear leads to that. But barn raisings, that coming together, the coming together and cooperating where we sacrifice our individual, I want to do what I want to do to be part of a group to accomplish something bigger. And folks, in the Middle East, if those guys would stop fighting and start cooperating and working together, they could all be more, so much more fruitful and well off. Now, that's easy to say. And so I pray for them every week. Why? Well, partly because Jesus told us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But also, more importantly, because I think it's only God who can change hearts and minds. And it may be sound even naive and foolish, but we serve a big God who does powerful things. So we keep on praying. So why don't we pray? Let's pray. Our loving God, help us to know our place 
in your creation as disciples, a little lower than the angels, responsible for caring for the world and everything in it and everyone in it. Okay, and that doesn't mean that we lord it over each other, but we serve each other, and it's in serving that we become great in your kingdom, even as you, Lord Jesus, served us by laying down your life on the cross for us. God, on this Remembrance Day Sunday, as we think about those men and women that laid down their lives for us in this world, teach us to <coughs> trust you enough to be the willing servants of you and our neighbors to help build peace. And let the peace start with us, one by one, and just maybe showing the world around us how much better it is to live in peace, hearts and minds can be changed. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to see him talk about how Jesus is king of all the nations. The grand family song, uh, Laura, we're going to pull verse 3 out of it.
And as Laura mentioned earlier, I want to lift up to you the family of Captain Aaron Mark Weidman of Waterloo, Ontario, whose dad and Laura and I went to Bible College together. Aaron passed away on October 13th, age 36, while serving his country in Latvia under some mysterious circumstances that are still being sorted out. Lord, I pray for his family who are mourning and ask that you would help them and help all of us to live in a way to honor his sacrifice. We pray for all soldiers and families who have served our nation in uniform and especially those families who have lost loved ones. As we think about war and peace, we pray for peace to come to our hearts and minds, but we also pray for peace to come to the Middle East and other parts of the world. Lord, this is going to take an awful powerful work of hearts and minds to be changed and forgiveness to happen. But God, you are big enough to do such things, and so we pray for it. We also pray for peace to come between Russia and Ukraine. We pray for our government leaders at all levels. Grant them wisdom, federally, provincially, and municipally. And give them wisdom in how to lovingly serve all of creation and all of our their, all of their neighbors so that people can live more fruitful, productive lives. Meanwhile, God, help us to see the neighbors, especially those neighbors who think differently than we do, not as enemy, but as fellow human beings made in your image, God. Meanwhile, God, we also thank you that there seems to be so far a peaceful transition of power starting after the American election. There are those who are excited and there are those who are disappointed and fearful. And Lord, the American population is very much split, almost down the middle. We pray for them to get through this transition and that it would be peaceful and continue to help that nation, like all people, to become more fruitful and productive. Meanwhile, God, we think about people dealing with health issues. We continue to pray for Jenny's cousin who's dealing with cancer, uh, Kathy with her brain tumor. We think of uh, Zach Gertchen and his family as they're dealing with uh, a very aggressive form of what appears to be terminal cancer. So guide the doctors, guide the nurses, be with all the family who are going through a very stressful and difficult time. We also keep on praying for uh, Kathy's sister-in-law, Audrey, um, and pray that this pain would be reduced so she can keep her exercise and recovery going. We continue to pray for Tyler Armstrong, and we think of Teresa Dugan, and we pray for her as she recovers from her cataract surgery and, and is just dealing with uh, the adjustments of her various uh, 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 treatments. Meanwhile, God, we also think of from Carroll Church, uh, Ken Hart, who is in hospital this week and seems to be uh, recovering. And Lord, as we seem to, as we seek to be your people in this day and in this generation, we pray for not only ourselves here at Hope, our partners at St. Andrew's Carroll, and all the other neighboring churches, that together and individually, as we will seek to be your disciples, under your teaching and guidance, help us to love and serve your creation and all of our neighbors in such a way that we can live fruitful, harmonious lives that will show and tell the world around us that your ways are the best ways to live, Lord Jesus Christ. And that faith can replace the hate and fear and violence, that, that faith and harmony and peace can be more present in our world. Lord, we pray for lots of situations, but there's lots more that need your attention. So in the silence of this moment, we lift you any other concerns in our hearts and minds. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Answer according to your will, power, and might, we ask by the power of the Holy Spirit to the glory of God the Father, 
In Jesus' name, amen. And so as we bring our service to a close, we are not alone, God is with us. And because of that, we can go in peace. Why? We can get, do not be afraid. Why? Because of the love of God the Father, made known to us through Jesus and His teaching, and the forgiveness through His death on the cross, and the invisible health of God's Holy Spirit. So let us go trusting in our God as we go in peace and help spread that peace to our neighbors and those around us. Let's stand and sing together.